We have got Michigan versus Washington. The number is up to five and a half for the Wolverines. And I can't help but believe the storyline in most people's minds, especially if you are rocking the Huskies tonight, is that Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are villains. You may even call them cheaters. What I tell you is players make plays, and this is a discussion for another day. But it is unbelievably difficult to put out of your mind that Jim Harbaugh is a villain. I don't think there's any doubt about that, whether it is the way that he has handled the level one allegations, whether it is recruiting during the COVID period or sign stealer guy, it almost doesn't matter. Jim Harbaugh seems to find himself in the middle of controversy, especially since he has walked on campus at Michigan. First, it's that he was not winning enough. He wasn't winning big games. Now he's winning too much and doing it the wrong way. Jake, is Jim Harbaugh the ultimate college football villain? Yeah, you know, I think Jim is, uh, you know, he's personified the role. I think Jim Harbaugh, you know, loves the game. And and to be a villain, you got to really appreciate, you know, being in that role. And I think he does. I think he likes being in the center of the the media narrative. He likes the us against the world thing. He likes, you know, his, his assistant coaches crying on the field while he was allegedly suspended, but still in the building. Like, you know, like he loves this game, this scheme, this this type of environment. And so, yeah, I do think he's the ultimate villain in college football. I mean, we've had, you know, some guys over the years that have kind of played that role, but Jim has kind of taken it to a new level. You know, when you, when you have a, 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 you know, a combination of, you know, COVID dark period violations now, along with sign stealer guy activity, you know, along with winning games, I think you, you have the perfect recipe to be a villain in college football, which is why tonight is such an important moment in Jim Harbaugh's coaching career. Because after tonight, who knows if he ever coaches another college football game in his career, whether that's by rule or choice, I don't know. Do you buy that? Oh, I think he's going to the league 100%. I think this is the last time we'll see him on a college football sideline for the next five years. I, I think he's gone. Yeah, and we reported exclusively last week, uh, Thursday, I believe it was, that the uh, L.A. Chargers, who used to be in San Diego when they had class and resembled an actual NFL team, now play at the Rams house in Los <laughs> Angeles. Uh, they have significant interest and in, intend to pursue Jim Harbaugh. Now, that was just us reporting that, the two hacks on YouTube. Right. The days before this afternoon when Adam Schefter at ESPN reported that uh, the San Diego Chargers fully intend to request an interview with Jim Harbaugh to be their next head coach. Uh, I would tend to agree with you. I think it's a for foregone conclusion. This is Jim Harbaugh's last game as a head football coach at Michigan because I believe he will be a top candidate for just about any job that's open. Um, and who knows, is the New England job open? Is the Dallas job open? Certainly, we already know that there's a great possibility the Las Vegas Raider job could be open, the Chicago Bear job, like places where Jim Harbaugh seemingly would be a good fit. There are no better places than Los Angeles with the Chargers, who have a young quarterback that's under contract for the foreseeable future that needs development. Jim Harbaugh is your ultimate quarterback developer guy. And I think Jimmy knows that he is going to face a long suspension at Michigan. And just to fly be so, I think he's looking at between a full eight games and a full year next season of a suspension from the NCAA. And I think he knows that this is his final, you know, the final uh, verse of his redemption song, if, if you will. And I think whether he goes to the NFL or not, it doesn't matter tonight because tonight, uh, justifiably so, is all about the national championship of college football. And here's the other thing I think is really important. I hope that most people watching this show will agree. Tonight's about the players because the, the thing that's lost in all of this Jim Harbaugh politics and drama, the players made the plays on the field. The players won their games. The players at Michigan were better than the players at Alabama. The players are 14-0. and 0. The players have a chance to write history for themselves. And it, it doesn't matter what you think about sign stealing. Sign stealing wasn't an issue against Alabama. Sign stealing won't be an issue tonight. Good plays by great players 
are going to determine the outcome of this game. And Jake, I think if you're asking me right now, I actually think you have to lean towards the Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, and I think the reason for that is the run game. I I, I think that, you know, whether you're a Michigan hater, a Michigan supporter, or if you're just kind of blasé about them, like you understand that Michigan strength offensively is running the football. And I think as much as, you know, America's favorite vacuum salesman, you know, can execute a jump cut, the reality of the situation is he typically has massive holes to run through because that offensive line is getting the job done. And so the thing for Washington tonight is can you stop the run? If you're not going to stop the run, you might as well not show up because they are going to run the football quite a bit tonight, in my opinion. And I don't know why you wouldn't. Washington hasn't exactly been a dominant force against the run. They're much better playing zone, you know, pass protection. Like that's what they're, that's their defensive setup. They're much, they're very athletic. They're just better against the pass than they are against the run. So for Michigan, yeah, I think you're going to run the ball a lot. And I, and, and I do think the five and a half point number is pretty spot on, not a touchdown favorite, but more than a field goal favorite, which I think is pretty fair based on the fact that you won against Alabama in overtime by a touchdown. That seems pretty straightforward to me. So who do I think is going to win this ball game? I, I think if Washington can hold Michigan to, you know, three yards of carry, you know, if you can keep them just in a reasonable number, you're going to win the ball game. I think Washington's wide receivers are more athletic than those cornerbacks that Michigan have. Now, I also think it gives Washington a huge advantage that they have a quarterback that can put it in with pinpoint accuracy 50 yards down the field on the sideline. This I think is a huge advantage. this is the best quarterback that Michigan has faced in the last two years. And I think when you look at what Michael Penix Jr. is, he's a guy who loves the moment. This is a guy that's won 21 straight games. I mean, that's not accidental, right? And I I'm think when you look at when you look at Michael Penix in this Washington team. Let's not forget Utah was supposed to be the one and then Texas and Oregon or Oregon was going to be the one twice in a row and it didn't happen. And then Texas was going to be the one because Texas has the athletes and still they prevailed and won their 21st game in a row. This isn't a fluke. It's not an accident. Kalen DeBoer has done a great job. Michael Penix Jr. is the best player in college football. I think he's got the most diverse and talented wide receiver group in, in college football, bar none. I think that Washington is an incredibly gifted and talented football team. But here's the problem. They're terrible against the run. And the best vacuum salesman I've ever seen, Blake Corum, that's a cat that's very difficult to bring down if you're good against the run. And I think what we saw about from Alabama, a team that's good against the run, they couldn't stop him either. There's nothing that makes me believe that Blake Corum doesn't go for a hundo tonight. And the other part of this is I think this Michigan offensive line has a, a cross to bear because they know if they win their their assignments tonight, they likely win the national championship. They likely go 15 and 0. They send Jim Harbaugh off with a golden parachute. They put all this sign stealing talk to rest. It just doesn't matter because Michigan won the national championship. Thanks. And I believe that rests with the offensive line. They are bigger, better, and more physical. They are more athletic than what Washington will show in the front seven. And I think Blake Corum has to carry the mail. And frankly, he's a kid that makes plays. So I go back to what I said before. In these situations, players make plays. And Blake Corum's a player that makes plays. Now, free Harbaugh, he's never going to be a quarterback that's going to beat you on his own. That's just not the way he plays. Does he have enough weaponry on the outside? I don't know. They got to win on the ground. Keep Michael Penix Jr. on the sideline. That's reason number one to run the football. Reason number two, Blake Corm's probably your, your best offensive player. Reason number three, your offensive line, they're probably your second best offensive player. Facts. Run the football. Reason number three, hey, Washington doesn't stop the run very well. Run the football. That's the key tonight, and I think that's why I favor Michigan. Yeah, and, and, and I think that running the football, as we all know, allows you to control the game. I mean, I mean, even, you know, if you can run the football tonight and you can get, you know, again, whether it's corn for 100 yards or, you know, if you've got a, a combined rushing attack of 150, yep. 160, like well, however you want to look at it, like if they can just successfully run the football tonight, yeah, I do think you're taking possessions away from Michael Penix Jr. And I think that that's a lethal combination, which nobody's been able to do against Washington yet. And that's where I think Michigan's a little bit different. But I do think that we should not be selling Washington's passing attack short. I I, I think that 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 defense 
for Michigan is very good. That defensive line obviously showed its ability against Alabama. But I also think against Alabama, you were playing Jalen Milrow, a guy who is not even close to the quarterback that Michael Penix Jr. is. He's not a threat passing the way well, Michael Penix and this Jr. Is, is. This is the conversation uh, about Tulia Tungabailoa at Maryland, the, the greatest passer in the history of the Big Ten. Is that a guy that is as good as or as lethal as Michael Penix Jr.? And I don't believe that he's close. And I don't, and you guys know I've supported Jalen Milrow all season long. He's not a ready quarterback at this point. Michael Penix Jr. is by far the best quarterback that this squad's going to face. And I think the, the, the great unknown in this game is this Michigan secondary. How truly tested is this Michigan secondary? Were they tested by Marvin Harrison Jr.? Not with that quarterback, they weren't. Right, I, I don't believe that this Michigan secondary has seen the diversity in schematics, the route combinations, the the pre-snap reads that they are going to see. I, I just don't believe that you've seen that in if you're Michigan because you haven't played multiple opponents that are complex in their schematics. You haven't played multiple opponents that can have groupings and pairings that can run you three wide receivers, a tight end, and then throw it out of the backfield. That's something I don't think you've seen. And the other thing I think is so so concerning here if you're Michigan, what if you get pressure up front? And I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, but think this through. If Michigan gets pressure up front, doesn't that lead you to the best of Michael Penix Jr.? Because this is a cat. We saw it against Oregon twice. I think he took a pretty good lick in the Utah game. I think we saw him under pressure against Texas. And he thrives on it. He loves to, to climb the pocket and deliver a, a, a absolute dime over the shoulder. He's better under pressure than he is in open space. That's a fact. You look at his passer rating. You look at his accuracy numbers. Under pressure, Michael Penix gets better, not worse. So I'm curious, do you flood the zone instead of coming after Michael Penix Jr.? I think it's a fascinating question defensively because if you flood the zone will he run effectively and if he runs can you physically pound him because the one thing we know about Michael Penix and this year he's been a little different this way but the one thing we know about Michael Penix is you put a shoulder pad in that sternum and he is going to hesitate to run again I think we've seen that during his time at Indiana certainly well he's a different player now during his time especially last season when he took a licking yeah he kept on ticking but he ticked in the pocket and not outside of it. And I think it's a very interesting question with a mean-spirited something to prove Michigan defense. Is Michael Penix able to beat you with his legs? Well, I think Michigan's trying to do both. I think I think Michigan's trying to flood the zone and get pressure. I, I think Michigan's saying, yeah. okay, we're gonna we're just gonna bring four standard pressure. I mean, I'm sure they'll mix in the occasional blitz or whatever, but I I, I think. What you're going to see tonight is is four man rush off of that defensive line. Let those guys make plays, and then we're gonna we're gonna play a lot, a lot of nickel, a lot of lighter packages in the secondary. We want dudes out on the field that can run around, that can keep up, that can make plays, that can say, okay, it, it, can we take? Because another thing that Penix does really well is he he hits the sideline route exceptionally well down the field. So are you going to force him to play the middle? Are you going to say, okay, we're we're going to double cover this guy and force you that way? Like that's what that's what I'm saying with Michigan's defense. This isn't as standard as, hey, yeah, Jalen Milrow can run a little bit and he can he'll break our secondaries back a couple times and get some first downs that maybe you know we we wouldn't want to give up uh, through the air. Yes. He'll run for those. But, yes. But but the thing is 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 they didn't really have to respect the 50 yard bomb to McMillan or Dunze or, you know, whoever it's going to be this time. Like, is it Dunze better than Marvin Harrison Jr.? I, it's close. I mean, I think it sounds ridiculous on paper, but then you start looking at it and you're like, wow, these two are actually pretty close. I think that's a huge question because the other thing you have to remember is this Michigan secondary, they're good. On paper, man, they look like the world is, the world is their oyster and you're living in their secondary. I think they're a good secondary. And I, I'm I'm curious because I, I think, and again, I know I say this every single time we talk about Washington football, but Jalen Polk, I think, 
and, and and probably Jack Westover as well. They're probably the two most important offensive figures in this game outside of Michael Penix. Facts. Because I, I think Roma Dunzi is going to get all the coverage he wants, the all the attention, all of it. And I, I think you look at the way that they, Michigan, went after Alabama. The difference here is Michigan attacked Jalen Milrow. Did they attack the wide receivers? They did not. They did not. They played press coverage. But this is the worst core of Alabama receivers I think we've seen in a decade. Because all them dudes are in the NFL. This, you're not going to, if you are Michigan, to be you are not going to be able to press man against Washington. And you are not going to be able to get after the quarterback's ass repeatedly because Michael Penix Jr. moves in the pocket as well as any quarterback playing football, Spatial awareness, dude. NFL or college. I, I don't, there is not a quarterback in the NFL that moves better than Michael Penix in the pocket that visually. Now, is he facing linebackers? Okay, great. He plays college. I get it. This cat moves well in the pocket. And there are few, and maybe Tua Tonga Vailoa is the best example. There are a few who have quick twitch mechanics the way that Michael Penix Jr. does. And that's going to be my question. I cannot wait. I am fascinated by it. It's going to be on 37 different ESPN platforms tonight. <laughs> and I'd be really surprised, really, really surprised if this game, I think what the, the number is 55 and a half. I'd be shocked if it goes over. Shocked. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the Michigan defense, obviously, you know, is is going to ball out tonight. But but I, I don't know. I just, this is one of those games where if you're an elite quarterback, you find a way here. You, you're you're going to you're gonna figure out what they're doing to you early in the game, obviously. You're going to go through the first couple of possessions and you're going to be like, all right, we understand what they're trying to do. This is what, this is, this is the confusing part. Like he's going to understand. But the question is going to be, can they continue to hit on those deep shots? Because it's not as though those are easy plays. It's not like those are just, give me five yards down the field. I mean, they're winning ball games by hitting the 15 yard crosser, then the 50 yard down the field. Then we're going to run for three yards and take another shot. Like that's how Washington wins games. So yeah. the question is to your point, can they sack him or is it going to be a thing where he's putting on a show inside the pocket and you're seeing a bunch of missed tackles right around his feet and he's completing a bunch of passes. I I'm telling you, that's truly where this game is decided. Because we know, I think we can confidently say, everybody can say, hey, Michigan's going to run the football effectively tonight. I think we can all agree on that. We'd be surprised if it was anything different. They're going to run the football tonight. But the question is, can Michigan or can Washington, with Penix and that core of wide receivers, complete at the rate they've been completing? Because if they do, it's going to be a very close game. Does Washington play fast enough to beat Michigan? Man, I think that's a huge question because I felt like Alabama, much to their brand, was a plodding, methodical elephant walking down the middle of the field mm -hmm. on its own leisure, mm -hmm. right? Like I felt Alabama was was slow. Oh, they tried to be methodical. Let's run the ball into the A gap. Please, God, do not let Washington run the ball into the MFing A gap. Please, not <laughs> one. Do not call one run into the A gap because you're just wasting your time. Yeah. You have to run the football. Totally agree with that. But with Johnson injured and and questionable here, I I think and and I know you guys. Oh, I checked not money and check ninety percent of the snaps in practice, bro. You tell me. So what does that get him through the first quarter? Are, are you really are you really telling me that Dylan Johnson's a guy you think is ninety percent of himself? There ain't a player on this field that'll be ninety percent of themselves. It's freaking January eighth. I, you can't tell me he's 50, 60% of himself. This guy, there, there are reports that he's got a fractured foot. Come on, man. If he truly has a fractured foot and, and I, he'll play, I, I think you could cut his foot off and he'll still play because that's what these kids do, you know, but this is 31, 24 Michigan. And I, I, I just don't know. I don't know how to, I can't find myself believing I can't find myself going over 55 and a half. Not with this, no. not with these two defenses. And, and I think it would take a special performance by Penix to go over 55 for sure. If the, it, it, and it may be, I'll, I'll stick with my Thursday, Friday prediction. Whoever scores 31st wins the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause, and if this game goes over, mm, 
If this game goes over, you gotta like Washington. You gotta like Washington. I think it's gonna be really close. I I I Michigan will control the clock. Now they did that against Alabama, and Alabama still ran more plays. But at the end of the day, Alabama was one play behind Michigan. Couldn't snap the football. We're not going to see that with Washington. So again, I can see Washington win the game. And tomorrow, don't come in here and say, Mountie won too many pizza puffs, fat ass. <laughs> you got it confused, bro. I'm not getting it confused. I can see a way that Washington wins this game. So get your facts straight. I can't see a way, you mullet-wearing freak, that <laughs> that this I'm goes over. I can't see this being a 60-64 point game. I can't. I don't know, dude. I don't I, know that I, Free Harbaugh is a good enough quarterback to score 30 points on his own. Right. But what if I said, hey, Coram's going to have three touchdowns in this game and Penix is going to have, you know, 350 yards, four touchdowns, like, it, you never know. I, I mean, there's no, like, we don't know how good you are until you play the best defense in college yes. football, which is Michigan right now. And and that's why I'm saying, like, I, I agree. I think Michigan has a better chance of winning this game than Washington for sure. But I'm definitely not going to sit here and say, wow, like, there's no way Washington's winning this one. Yeah, there absolutely is a way Washington can win this yeah. one. Slow them down on the ground, like hold them to three and a half, four yards maybe. Don't allow the 80-yard quorum run. That's all you got to do. And then your offense has to be him tonight. You've got to be on schedule, third and three, not third and nine. You know, play, be aggressive on first down, right? Take your shots down the field and then have really good, smart, effective play calling. Because that's the other thing in the Alabama game. There were so many times where I was like, dude, they're not stopping you if you just run the ball outside. Run the ball into the flat, maybe maybe a little disguise, maybe a little reverse pivot, whatever, but run it into the flats. You were getting four or five yards of pop. But, and Jake, can we get emotional together? Uh, hang on one sec, one sec. Can, can okay. we get – can we talk about Scam Newton? Tim Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> Vince Young forks up. Can we talk about the great run by washcloth master Deshaun Watson? Trevor Lawrence and that flipping huge forehead. Five head. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Is Michael Penix that quarterback? Yes, yes, yes. That will put the entire team in a wheelbarrow and just... Push them down the field to victory. I'm for real. Because we get it once every couple of years, man. And I'm telling you now, Free Harbaugh ain't that quarterback for no. Michigan. He's not that nope. dude. He 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 is not that dude. But man, if you think about if you think about what Joe Burrow meant to L or excuse me, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. If you think about Joseph what Lee Burrow meant to LSU, he was the whole world. And he had great wide receivers. Who's that sound like? Well, an elite quarterback should have won the Heisman. And he's got elite wide receivers. Man, I wish there was a team in the college football playoff this year that had that setup because we'd know who was going to win the win the game. Tell me Michael Penix Jr. doesn't fit the profile. I want the best people. And tell me Michigan does not. Because usually when we get that sexy-ass sports car running down the middle of the field like Michael Penix will <laughs> they win the game but I think I'm I, I I am more I am more willing to go with Michigan and and listen if you're a betting man your bread should be money line Michigan I'm not betting spreads money line Michigan that's a play tonight right mm -hmm. that to me that's a play tonight I am not here to bet against the Wii fence because I think I think that the head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers has defense. put together a very good football team that has two really good coordinators, and I think the defense is going to come through tonight. Just 30, stalwartness. 31-24 Michigan. That's, I, I can't get away from the under on this game. And I get it. I'm stupid. I don't know anything. And <laughs> I, I, I read I read my comments on, on YouTube, uh, and, you know, I get it. Every Michigan fan thinks I'm a fraud. Well, here I am, Michigan fan. 
I'm picking Michigan. That means Washington's going to win. We know how this game is played. Yeah. Should we hit the buck shot before we make our final yeah, predictions? I think it's it's all, dude. It's we're 27 minutes in the program. We can't be making final predictions yet. Come on. No, I'm I I you're not getting me off 31 24 Michigan. I, that was just a bridge to get to the greatest energy shot you've ever had in your life. Make me the argument that Michigan's defense can't handle Washington's offense. No. I don't know. And so, okay. Well, oh, you agree with me. Okay. Then make me the the argument that this defensive line will not inflict damage on Michael Penix Jr. tonight. And those like okay, so if we say Washington, this is the best offense that Michigan's defense has played, and they're going to be better than Michigan's defense. Okay, well then, here's my other question: Who's the best offensive player at Michigan? Like it, it's it's Eureka Boy. I, 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 tell me I'm wrong. Eureka boy. Right? It, it, it is absolutely Sharknado guy. Vacuums are my thing. I'm out of vacuum names. Eureka, Shark. Anyway, Blake Hoover. Horn. Hoover is their best <laughs> offensive player. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Blake Corum, Balake, is the best offensive player at Michigan. Mm -hmm. He plays running back, and he plays it well. As undersized and mighty as he is, Washington does not play the run well at all. Can you measure it? At, they now you want a, a, a couple of players that can get after the quarterback's ass. Absolutely, your your Washington Huskies. But I'm telling you, Penix is as good as anyone at making someone miss in the pocket. How many times was he standing there like a statue? And and Texas defensive line was like, "Yep, I got him." And then all of a sudden he deked you and you were on your ass and he was 50 yards down the field. That's what this guy does. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. I truly believe Penix's shiftiness in the pocket is as good as their defensive line is at getting home. And that's what the national championship of college football should be about. Your best player versus our best player. Who's going to get the job done. And that's truly what I believe we have tonight. And by the way, and we're going to get to Florida State later on and all that nonsense. By the way, <laughs> they got it right. The college football playoff committee once again delivered. They got it right. The why, two do you best say, teams are why do you say stupid stuff like that? We all know that SMU got screwed out of the college football playoff. Oh, wait, that's later. And they weren't in the cop, but it's that's the, bullshit. The unintended consequences. Um, I think, oh. listen, I think Washington's very good. I think Braylon Trice and that defense. We'll get after the quarterback, and all that's fine and, and dandy. Explain to me how you put up – because if they score 30, they'll score 35. Mm -hmm. How do you put up 35 on Michigan's defense? Because I know how to get, get to 30. Them. That's how. You I, run by them. Well, that secondary is very good at not getting beat deep. I was, is that not what we said about Texas? It, it is. Texas but, is one of the fastest secondaries right, in the country. But Texas always had coverage issues, right? I think we all can agree their secondary wasn't tight. This Michigan defense wants you to be in front of them so that they can drill you into the ground like a manhole cover. Like, they're coming for that ass. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I'm Michigan, nobody's getting behind me, and I am going to physically – I am going to beat you into the turf. Like, I am going to leave your DNA in Houston. And I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna leave that so that I have more room for the championship trophy. Like, they're going to physically pound Washington. Can Washington stand? I I cannot wait to find out. Yeah. I can't wait to find out. All right, let's hit the buck shot. Bucked up energy, the official energy provider of the Monty show. Let's uh, sit up straight in the chair. Whew, shake it up. All right. Uh, back on the Blue Raz run, we've told you guys, this is the greatest energy supplement you're ever going to use. Stop doing the five-hour energy. Stop doing all of this nonsense where, what's the main ingredient? It's something you can't pronounce. Because you guys, it's garbage. When you look at what box shot is, it is elite ingredients that make an elite product that does exactly what it says it's going to do. It gives you what I think is really critical, which is naturally sourced caffeine. You're getting green tea leaf extract, which is a natural caffeine. So it gives you natural energy. You're not getting chemicals to create a reaction, right? Not, you know, things made in the laboratory. No, no. You get brain food and green tea leaf extract to give you that natural mental rise. Finish the TPS report, dude. 
Hey, maybe you're a day trader or try day trading. You need to lock in for these last two hours. Buckshot. It's going to give you that mental lift. There's no crash. There's no spike. It just does what it says it's going to do. And as we prepare to disappoint SMU fans across the world, I say cheers to you, friends. <laughs> you laugh. It's not the SMU fans are going to be disappointed. But get it right now. Buckedup.com. Use the promo code MONTY20. MONTY to get 20% off at checkout. Promo code MONTY to get 20% off at checkout. And hey, you guys asked for it. And I appreciate everybody who went and got your uh, your links. Uh, click the babe links in the description below. Bucked Up has an entire line for women that's called Babe. And it is everything that women need to be at their best, to be healthy, to work out, to train. Everything from greens to creatine, you name it. Bucked Up's got it for your girl or your gal. Get it in the link in the description below. There's a great sampler pack. And I, I know we all talk about ourselves and we're dudes and we want to be awesome. But you look at this this um, this babe pack. It's nine sample packets and a a contoured shaker for ten bucks. They'll send it right to your front door. Click the link in the description below. Bucked up the official energy provider of the Monty Show. All right, before we rip, at, I mean, talk about SMU. Now, last Friday I was a little disappointed in the comments section. You know, it wasn't your guys' best work. So can we please do just a little bit better today? What do you mean you were disappointed? It just, you know, we just didn't have good flow. You but, know? dude, we're we're 600 subscribers away from 50,000. Yeah, and we haven't even announced what we're giving away for 50,000 yet. Like, you should subscribe. It's going to be good. You guys want to know what we're giving away for 50,000 or you don't care? <laughs> Okay, you don't care. It, 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 fine, listen, fine. we were going to tell you, you but like since that. you don't care, it's fine. Nobody said boo. Yeah, Matt Ritson for $2. <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, it's tequila time. Washington beats Michigan 34-28. Let's go. So it's a shootout. Are you rooting for Jim Harbaugh to lose? Yes. Yeah, me too. Uh, Tanner Plummer, a member for one year. Okay, hold on. All right. <laughs> Tanner Plummer, let's go, my guy. Even though you're a miserable Philadelphia Eagles fan, please. But how could you blame them, dude? They're going to go out in the first round. We all know that. Come on. Whatever. Washington beats the defense 35-31. Mark it down. So we have ESPN on, on the uh, old television here in the background, running all kinds of stats about how Washington's got the number one offensive line in the country. So that's what I'm saying. This is everything you ever wanted in a college football playoff national championship they're, game. They're, they're going. It's the best of the best, bro. It's great you have the best offensive line in football. Stay hard. That defensive line at, at Michigan. Did, uh, when, uh, yeah, Mom, are Monty you, hates Michigan. Are you a Michigan guy now? Monty like, hates. Hell, we all dude. know Monty hates Michigan. He's yeah, ignoring dude. lies and telling the truth. That means like, he hates Michigan. Dude, when did you become a Michigan slurper? I'm just, hey, it's what I do. <laughs> All I'm saying is it that Michigan defensive front is, it's unbelievable. What's wrong with you? The, the only thing that I can say contrary to that Michigan defensive front, if now Ohio State center McLaughlin had snapped the ball, mm -hmm. we're not having this conversation because it would be Alabama versus Washington. But in fairness, in fairness, all year long, we've said, hey, no looking back, no, That's you know, right. no, no quarterback couching or whatever. No like, sign stealer no, guy conversation yeah, on dude, the Monty show here. Not, no, uh, you know, I mean, we would never do that. So we never you know. talk about Jim Harbaugh, the new coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. <laughs> Excellent strategy. Sir. I, I mean, we would never talk we about would never talk about how iconic it is to burn down one of the most prestigious you know, programs in the country only to leave for the NFL. We or or it, we would never say that the FBI was on campus investigating computer crimes. Not on this show. Not today, certainly. It's a wee fence. Want to yeah, it's a wee fence. We know they waxed their body here in Ann Arbor. It's we're not fence. We're not doing that on this show. Okay. Maybe America's team. Anybody check the bottom lip? Anybody check the bottom lip? Look at that. Jay Toffa, the best barber in, in the world. Cause if, shit's going good. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that yeah, thing get whacked. It. You'd have seen it, dude. I made it. I made a personal sacrifice no, for the didn't. program, dude. No, you didn't. 
No, you didn't. Uh, Paulo, the college portal out of control. It should not open till the college season is over. Why? Dude, I'm not here for portal talk today. Can, can we focus on a ball game, please? I played the funeral. Because music. the guy's over here ruining the energy. You're you're in here, and thank you for tipping to do it. You're in here talking about how, how the portal's ruining the game. Yeah, okay, why, why is the portal ruining this game? Fine, cool. Stay over there crying about it. I don't I'm, disagree with you that there should be a smaller, more definitive portal window. And there should be two of them. One as soon as the college football season ends, and then the last day of spring football. We have every day besides today to talk about how crappy the portal is. He wasn't done, by the way. Oh. He said uh, NIL deals should force all players to play all games. <laughs> so, okay, you want them out there on crutches. I understand. You know, uh, I think that kids should take the money and play as little football as they have to play. But and I'm not even joking. A check for half a milli. And you could not play. You're telling me that you would still play. Come on. Well, I I I watched back to back yesterday uh, because it was snowing like a madman. Yesterday morning, Mrs. Monty hey, and Monty. I watched the Deion Sanders uh, Prime Video Show again. Mm -hmm. Shador Do Sanders. You believe? So Shador Sanders got hurt at the end of the year. He shouldn't get paid his NIL money. Come on, come on now. T.J. Beck, Kalen DeBoer not signed his extension with UW. Where is he going? Michigan, the NFL, yet to be seen. The ink isn't dry yet. Yet to be seen. Yet to be seen. I don't think we know. I don't think he knows. The eye patch. Breaking news. Harbaugh to be Raiders' next head coach. Yeah, they have a head coach, and he's not going anywhere. My fucking ass. So. We'll see. Yeah, I, I would disagree with that. I would disagree with that. Uh, Bailey Dietrich says, shark, dirt, dirt devil. Okay. <laughs> Dirt duffel, devil. Yeah, Boston Mapes. Nothing sells like a good old Kirby vacuum cleaner. For real. Uh, Jeff Woodworth, Swiffer. Swiffer doesn't make a vacuum. Does Wait, it? do they? No. Swiffer's not in the vacuum business, dude. No, they're in the hardwood floor with liquid and cloth and stuff. Oh, excuse me. They're in the vac mop business. The vac? Okay. Bro, the Swiffer <laughs> vac mop. Okay. This is too far now. Stop it. Uh, Boyd Lake, Rainbow. Is Rainbow a vacuum? Okay. And Donut says Dust Buster. Yes. Uh, Kirby Corum. I like it. <laughs> Dyson. Yes, Keaton Critchlow. There you go. Dyson. Stay hard. Long timer Keaton Critchlow coming up with Dyson. Boyd Lake, Simplicity. Matt Ritson, Eureka. UW fan, Jim. Texas had so much speed. We had to back off. No disrespect to Michigan, but the dogs can't. Uh, can cheat up more in this one. Uh, I think the problem with cheating up more in this one is you're way more susceptible to big plays. And while I agree that Free Harbaugh is not a guy that I'm worried about beating you down the field, you better stop the run. You better stop the run. And it'd be nice if you could stop the run out of base because if you have to bring guys down, that's when Michigan starts beating you. Yep. So, mm, I yeah. Uh, Capazzo, my guy, what's up? Monty, don't forget Dyson Rainbow Filter Queen. Damn. Windsor Kirby Ricar. Ricar, okay. There are so many you should be able to do. Uh, you should be able to go for days. I'm a I'm a Dyson vacuum guy. Uh, like, I know black and we have a black and decker like for our little office space. Little mini vac. You know, it's fine. Uh, Joseph Carruthers, Penix has shown he doesn't always need to the receivers to beat the DBs. No, he doesn't. Excellent. Excellent under throw. Excellent back shoulder fade thrower. I agree. Mike Smith. What's up, Mountain Mama? Good to see you. Uh, Texas had a damn, had a damn stout active D line. They did. They did. And I think it got to, I think it got to, and this is my biggest concern, Dylan Johnson who was down writhing in pain in that game and only averaged 2.3 yards a carry. That's a, that's a little concerning. So I'm saying, dude, this is the game we deserve. Uh, it, it, it's a phenomenal, probably the best defensive line in college football against the best offensive line in college football against what I would say is the best quarterback in college football. Yeah. And how many sacks did Texas have? Not a single one. So, I don't disagree with that, but I think Texas also ran for 180 yards, uh, and they did it really with 
with Baxter Blue and 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 Quinn Ewers. Mm-hmm. But what did Washington do to Quinn Ewers? They punished that ass. <laughs> they hit Quinn Ewers. I, I that's why I said I'm not. I, I am certainly not sitting here married to my 31-24 Michigan. But it's the best score that I could come up with. I'm pretty formulaic when it comes to picking games. And I think Michigan will be able to carry the clock because they run the ball. And so I don't see, I mean, if you take two possessions away running the football, if you consistently have seven, eight minute drives, that's really damaging to Washington. And Michigan against Alabama, which is a pretty good secondary. And admittedly, Michigan did a really nice job with pre-snap disguise. And it confused Alabama secondary. And I, I'm, I mean, you you look at you look at the big plays across the middle. I think that's what Washington has to avoid because I, I think I look at I look at the way that Washington defended Texas, and uh, you give Braylon Trice that edge, and you let him control that side. I thought he did a really good job of being disciplined. I thought he did a really good job at times reading what Texas was trying to do and he stayed home uh, to keep an edge. I think that's going to be really important because Blake Corum is a guy that's got elite footwork and he loves nothing more than to to plan a foot and cut back through a an undisciplined open gap. Mm-hmm. And he loves nothing more than to get to that linebacker because there's not a linebacker one-on-one in this country that I think can tackle uh, Balake. I, I truly don't. And all the jokes about, hey, he's a little smaller, like, you know, he's not a prototypical size running back. That I think that actually works in his advantage. I, I mean, you, you start to understand just how strong he is for his size. Yes. And he's quick. So good luck tackling a guy that is smaller than you. So his pad level is definitely going to be lower than yours just starting out. He's quicker than you. So I guess I'm just sitting here saying, okay, if we let's assume, let's just assume, hey, Michigan's gonna run for a hundo tonight. No, just book it. Like just write it down. That's happening. Okay. So they're gonna be averaging seven, eight minute drives. That basically means that Washington is gonna get they're gonna have to go, you know, what, eighty percent success rate on their drives. Yeah, I at mean, least. you're gonna have to score you know, probably five or seven or, you know, however many drives you're going to have to score 10 to 12 or whatever it winds up being like, you're going to have to score at a really high rate in this game. And by the way, it would be nice if you, if you turned Michigan over once, I have to say that too. If, if they can find an interception in the secondary, that would be huge. Cause we saw that in the Texas game and Penix ate them alive for turning it over. So if you can turn them over too, I think that really helps. But again, I just think this is a really difficult game when you really are honest about this game. Whether it's whether you look at the line line play, you look at the quarterback situation, you look at, at at the advantage Michigan has running the ball, you look at the athleticism on both sides of the ball outside. Like these are two pretty evenly matched teams, but then you start looking at the grit and the want to out of Michigan's defense. Well, and that's the overcomer so far. So I don't know. I, I just I, I don't know. I really believe. It comes down to what kind of Michigan team do we get tonight? Because if we get the same one we got against Alabama, which I would guess we would, I think they're probably going to win the game. But again, it's I I just feel silly saying something like, yeah, well, Michael Penix Jr. isn't going to throw for 300 yards in this game. I find that hard to believe, dude. Really, I hard find to it very hard to believe. I, I, I we'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. I, I don't know. I, I just, yeah. It's tough for me, man. Like, it, it is... Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Boyd Lake, if it's a shootout, Huskies win. Uh, Derek Warner says if Washington can hold Michigan under 100 yards, they win. Well, I think that's a really good point. It's really, that's going to be hard to do. Dude. If you hold that, if you hold Michigan under 100 yards rushing, they can't con- control the clock. I think that's an impossibility. And just looking at some of Michigan's numbers, I mean, you're looking at, you're looking at a situation where Michigan, I'm not going to say Michigan runs at it's saying Michigan runs at will is a little much. But I think when you look at a 14 and 0 football team, what did they put up total? Um they're in totality against Alabama. They man, my computer's slow right now. Uh they ran for 130 yards rushing. 
and Alabama had 172. And it was 32 attempts, 4.1 yards a carry. The other thing that I think is really important here is how many how many penalties does Michigan take? Because that would they have been, I think, very disciplined in their biggest games. Like if you go back to the Ohio State game and you start looking at those the team stats in that game, um, they ran for 156 yards, and they only had three penalties for 34 yards. Like they don't take a lot of stupid penalties, right? And, but that 156 yards, again, 39 attempts, four yards of carry. Man, if you can get four yards of carry, five yards of carry is elite. Four yards of carry is awfully good. Like, if you can get 150 yards rushing. Now, Ohio State's defense, I don't believe, um, played their best game. I, 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 I just think that Lloyd Carr had a very bad game coaching Ohio State that day. What, you don't like the Lloyd Carr reference? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mike Smith, Bucked Up and Buckshot are great names for that product. Babe, not so much. Well, it is specifically tailored for women. So I think I think it tells you exactly what it is, right? Uh, Kevin the Destroyer says, uh, Contoured for her pleasure. He's talking about the... Uh, I'd be better. The Babe Cup. Well, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. What do you mean be we better? We know where they're going with this. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I would never know such you know, terrible thoughts and stuff. Uh, Drew Christensen, a member of the show for six months. Drew. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Drew. Best part of this game will be the ribs I'm making. Why, Drew? Why tell dude, me that? what are you doing, man? Come on. I, dude, I am a huge fan of ribs. Oh, my God, I love ribs. So good. Uh, Matthew uh, Farmer, a member for four months. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Matt. Good to see you. Uh, Charles Michael Sinclair. Um, okay. Three names. What the fuck are you? Serial killer found Charles Michael Sinclair, <laughs> the coat hanger bandit. <laughs> Harbaugh a lock for the chargers. I think that will be his most aggressive pursuer. Yeah. And I think we had been hearing, I don't know. I think several weeks ago we reported that the bears had lost interest a, a, a bit in Harbaugh. Um, and boy, did they look terrible yesterday? Mm. Uh, I, and I think they know the bears are not going to pony up if they fire Eberflus and I'm not guaranteeing that they're not going to pony up the kind of money that it will take to get Jim Harbaugh. I think the Spanos family will absolutely pony up to pay Jim Harbaugh. I think they know that the funny thing about the chargers they had a window with, you know, Justin Herbert that, you know, the Keenan Allen's like they have likable guys on that team. Mm -hmm. They spent a bunch of money on the defense and they just got worse. I think they knew that they had talent and they couldn't win. I think they believe Jim Harbaugh can make them a better team if they go and get more skill positions, which he will mandate. So I think that the Chargers will give him what he wants financially and they will allow him to leverage his 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 roster, in my opinion. So I think that's why the Chargers would be the best fit for him. Right. Uh Cougar Tracks gives us five months. Let's go, Let's go, baby. Let's go, Cougar Tracks. Appreciate you and everybody on the show. Make sure you hit the like button on the program. Let's see, where are we at likes today? We've had a thousand one hundred and fifty views and only forty-three likes. Come on now, hit the like button. If you're watching on YouTube, please sub uh, hit subscribe. We are really close to 50,000 subscribers here on the showroom. Um, we are at 49,398, 602 subs to go. Let's go. And I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. 